are eight days away, eight days a week, eight days away from the draft. We did rank eights yesterday. Today, we're eight days away. And Brock, that means we only have a few draft profiles left. Who do we have today? Get him, freaking out of All right. This is Let's Brock go. and Salk. I don't read the internet, guys. Take the bull by the hands. On. No, not that one. The Seattle we go. Sorry, that's this is Brock Heward's draft profile. You want traits? Check. Yeah. You want to vote the leader? Check. Yeah. At the end of the day, you have to say, okay, what's best for the organization? Can you make people around you better? And can you bring people together? Every day at 9 a.m. leading up to the draft. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Can you make people around you better? You can you bring day. people together? I do. I love it. I didn't even ask Justin Amore to make sure they get that cut of John Schneider. But, man, does that resonate every single day. And today, we got the biggest, baddest dude in this draft. And Tavondre Sweat, defensive tackle, University of Texas, 6'4 and a half, 366 pounds. <laughs> Six four and a half, thirty three and a quarter inch arms, ten and a half inch ginormous hands, and three hundred and sixty six pounds. And does he bring people together? Yes. Does he make people around him better? Yes. Was he the Outland Trophy Award winner this season? You bet he was. That goes to the biggest, baddest big boy on the line of scrimmage in all of college football. Big Twelve Defensive Player of the Year, first team All American. So this dude played for five years at Texas. That's not uncommon. We've got guys that play six years. Cam McCormick's going to play his ninth year of college football. How? I don't know, but he is. But in five years of college football, here's the great thing about Tavondre Sweat. Dude was available for 62 games. He posts. He's not a big man that's got a back injury. He's not a big man that's got a hamstring injury. He's not a big man that finds a way to not play. He plays game in and game out. Now, the biggest challenge is playing play in and play out once you get beyond about four. He'll give you a four really good ones. And then at 366, he's got to huff and puff his way off the field, get a little bit of oxygen and get back on the field. Five years, 62 games played. This year was by far the most dominant. Not just a space eater. Not just at that size, taking two guys, 45 tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, couple sacks, uh, six batted balls, just a stat stuffer. And that's why he was the player of the year in the conference. You had to account for him. And, every, you know, I had him twice this season. I had him early in the year against Rice on the field when it was 150 degrees. I had him late in the season up in Ames, Iowa. And in both of those games, both offensive coordinators, Nate Shieldhouse for Iowa State, Marcus Tuiasasopo at Rice, say point blank like you have to have a plan you can't just go in and run your stuff like you've got to account for this guy in every single year one of your run snaps and just saying well we'll, we'll double team him that's not good enough <laughs> sometimes you gotta triple team him to just move him off of his spot and uh boy he was an immovable force two last things bad news is april 7th he got arrested for a d Right, got arrested for yep. DWI. So DWI. going through the process right now, driving under the influence DUI. So April 7th, that did happen. That's the bad news, and that was a really bad decision. The good news, Salk, is if that guy walked in the room as enamored as you are with Jared Verse, and as much as we love Troy Fautano, if that man walked through the door, he'd have to turn sideways, and he sat down and plopped down next to you right now, and you spent 10 minutes with him, he left the room, you would do this. You clap your hands, no, yep. you rub it, you give me a little fist pump, and you're like, that's my guy. <laughs> because if you somehow blended DJ Fluker and Colin Cole together, you get to Vondre oh, Sweat. Man. If you blended oh, DJ Fluker and me. Colin Cole together, oh. you get to Vondre Sweat. Because Big Boy stepped into our meeting. I think he was the only defensive lineman we have ever talked to in a production meeting, but we were like at the end of the year, like, yep, got to talk to him. He walked into our meeting. He so overwhelmed it in that hotel in Ames, Iowa. I did one of my little instigator things that you love about me. I looked down at my board. I put my glasses on. I looked up at him. I said, so Devondre, I'm just, I love to do this with players. I love to make sure my numbers are right here. I got you at six, four and a half, 325. And he said, what? He laughed I'm out loud. He laughed out loud. He's like, I'm 365. <laughs> like, 
Okay. Yes, you are. I didn't even fake the funk. Like that is who I am. Yeah. He knows exactly who he is. He makes everybody laugh. He is. He lights up that room. He had a lot of dudes at Texas. A lot of guys on that D line, and including Byron Murphy right next to him, that were excellent players. Mm -hmm. But he was the electricity. He was the voltage. He was the one salt that when I walked away from Texas games, I was like, that dude's unblockable. Like one on one, you can't block him. <laughs> one on one, you can't move him. Two on one, it's really hard to move. And there's a reason nobody could really run against Texas between the tackles. Devondre Sweat was that kind of building block. Okay, where is he going to go at this point? So uh, that is today's draft profile. It is uh, Devondre Sweat from, uh, from Texas. Mm hmm. He's not a first rounder. Not right? a first rounder. Is he a second rounder? A third? I mean, the problem is you only have one pick in the third round. So mm -hmm. I know we've talked about guys that maybe you would move up for or whatever. It feels hard to Don't imagine. you get a sense with all of my profiles this year, maybe more than ever before? Like this is a draft to have between like pick 40 yes. and 80. It's to have a few of them. Uh-huh. So if there has ever been a time to really leverage that 16th pick, and I'm telling you, there are going to be a couple guys that I am sure they will have a, a grade, a, a real high grade on that, that fall to them at 16. Can you find a way to really, really manipulate? Can you find not one team that wants to trade with you, Salk, but find two teams or three teams or four teams? Because that's when you've got the leverage to be able to say, hey, man, I got this offer here. I'm going to need two twos and a three. Or I'm going to need, you know, two twos and a five, mm -hmm. you know, so then I can take my fours and my five and come back up into that third. So all of a sudden, maybe twos. now I have three twos or, yeah. you know, two twos and two threes again. And I get four of those guys in the top 110 mm -hmm. so I can get a bunch of these dudes I profiled. Mm -hmm. Where will he fall? Uh, probably into that third round. Maybe late second. I don't because know for sure. Maybe someone what? will love him. Oh, just, just how, many, how of often he the can volume be of the plays. Yeah, yeah. Like how much can he legitimately play for us? Yeah. You know, and this would have been a challenge, I think, in our old Seahawks system where it was so like, OK, here's our run group. Right? Remember when Big Red and like, like that, those big heavies came on the field like you weren't running on them. So what did teams all do? Well, we're going to throw when the big heavies are on the field. We're going to throw. And so when the light guys are on the field, then we're going to run it. And um, that can be a little bit of the challenge. Like when he's on the field, like, fine, but we'll just we'll just throw against him. Yeah. But he showed this year he's got a little more wiggle, a little more movement, a little more endurance. And I'll say one last thing. If there is a team that would be the perfect fit to grow, maybe a guy that's got a little immaturity in his decision making, then maybe grow the guy in his work ethic and perseverance and endurance. Leonard Williams and Jaron Reed mm -hmm. would be a pretty good group to sandwich that guy. Right, to really grow, develop, and get the very, very most out of them. Be a pretty good fit here.